today's lecture the topic for today's lecture lecture number 4 is religious status of the world before islam so the learning objective of this uh, lecture is uh, to know the religious status of the arabs and the world before the coming of the prophet and to appreciate the blessings the prophet came with so if you see the state of the world before islam the status of the uh, religion of the arabs before islam you will really really appreciate islam and even today if we look around us so many different people so many different religions so many different cultures and alhamdulillah we are you know blessed with islam blessed with tauhid so it's so beautiful so before going into the seera uh, that is the first uh, uh, chapter about the birth of the prophet we are going to see the religious status of the world before islam it's a big topic okay but we have to study it so that uh, we really appreciate the seera classes and even uh, we appreciate islam so significance of knowing the religious status of the world before the prophet uh, when we understand pre islam we will appreciate islam when we understand jahiliya that is the idolatry we will appreciate the blessings of the sending of the prophet peace be upon him now we come to pre islamic arabia the religion of ibrahim alaihi salam and ismail alaihi salam so we know every nation had a prophet and one of the prophet of the arabs was ibrahim alaihi salam ibrahim alaihi salam you know, sanctioned many practices which remain for thousands of years until the coming of the prophet you know uh, when the, the when the prophet was born when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know started preaching the institution of hajj was there the the status of the kaaba was you know so great and uh, the you know so many practices were there which were started by ibrahim alaihi salam and the prophet con continued it in islam so what were these practices the first practice which was introduced by ibrahim alaihi salam and continued by the prophet peace be upon him after nearly 2000 years was to consider makkah sacred okay we call makkah haram or haram from the same word as haram it is called so because many things that are halal outside the haram are haram inside the haram okay that for example in, if you go inside the haram you can't you, you cannot kill animals you cannot pluck the leaves of trees you know you cannot you know so many things are there but outside it's okay but inside haram they become haram perfectly halal things become some of the things become haram that is why it is called masjid al masjid al haram or haram okay a person it is said a person would see the murderer of his father doing tawaf and he wouldn't touch the hair on his head because this is haram okay okay while doing the tawaf okay a person would see the murderer of his father but he could not attack he couldn't attack that person why because it is the haram it is not allowed to kill anybody so that is why you know makkah is called the haram sacred and this was introduced by ibrahim alaihi salam and the same no practice was continued by the prophet peace be upon him second practice introduced by uh, ibrahim alaihi salam and continued by the prophet was showing respect to the kaaba okay this is another thing which was continued by the prophet peace be upon him then the third thing which was uh, introduced by ibrahim alaihi salam and continued by the prophet was instituting the four sacred months you know the four sacred months okay in these months all hostility has to cease no wars no battles okay 
no fighting you are not allowed to engage in any kind of fighting everybody must be at peace okay you can travel anywhere you can journey to any part of arabia no one will attack you no one will you know fight with you because they are the four sacred months fourth thing which was started by ibrahim alaihi salam and continued you know by the prophet peace be upon him is the hajj with all of its rites and rituals doing the tawaf doing sa'i the aspect of sacrificing animals around the haram the aspect of decorating the animals that are assigned to be sacrificed there are so many practices we do even now during hajj was started by ibrahim alaihi salam now there is a important point to note here many non muslim researchers many christian missionaries many people who you know attack islam uh, intellectually they say that the prophet adopted certain practices from paganism okay he didn't have you know uh, islam was not revealed to him you know he just you know uh, continued the practices of hajj and all these things started by ibrahim alaihi salam okay started the practices of paganism okay and he you know his islam was not his own he just continued the paganistic practices during hajj etc which was started you know by the people of ibrahim alaihi salam after ibrahim alaihi salam passed away after many years people started these paganistic practices and the prophet continued that so it is absolutely wrong right we say that is uh, that prophet muhammad peace be upon him continued the practices okay started by ibrahim alaihi salam the pure monotheistic practices based on tauhid now people you know started after ibrahim alaihi salam people added you know some falsehood some paganistic practices some shirk in those practices which the prophet cleared it okay the prophet cleansed the original teachings of ibrahim alaihi salam from these uh, uh, falsehood okay so this is not the case you know prophet muhammad peace be upon him adopted certain practices continued certain practices started by ibrahim alaihi salam <clears throat> but he removed the shirk remove the paganistic uh, practices of the people which the people after ibrahim alaihi salam had added so this we should know now a very interesting uh, topic again pre islamic arabia the history of paganism you can ask uh, you know we can ask ourselves a question if the arabs had a prophet You know, who was Ibrahim alayhi salam, and he taught Tawhid. So where did paganism come from? Hmm? Why were there three sixty idols around the Kaaba? So Ibrahim alayhi salam taught Tawhid. Now the Arabs are people, you know, coming from Ibrahim alayhi salam. So where did paganism come from? Where did the shirk come from? From where did these idols come from? So the answer is a uh, a person known as Amr. Amr ibn Luhay al Khuzai. It is mentioned in Sahih Muslim. Okay, Allah's Prophet peace be upon him said, "I saw Amr ibn Luhay al Khuzai wandering around in the fire of hell with his intestines, with his entrails cut open behind him, being punished in a humiliating manner." Okay, what was the reason? he was the first to change the religion of ibrahim alaihi salam and ismail alaihi salam he was the first to introduce shirk into the pure monotheistic religion brought by ibrahim alaihi salam allah says in the quran in surah number 5 verse number 103 allah says it was not allah who instituted the superstitions of a slit ear she camel or a she camel let loose for free pasture or idol sacrifices okay, all these things allah didn't institute this okay allah is free of all this falsehood allah mentions this in the quran so amr 
Ibn Luhay al Khuzai was the person who started the practices of shirk in the uh, pure monotheistic religion brought by Ibrahim alayhi salam. So what is the story of Ab Amr ibn Luhay? It is narrated that Amr ibn Luhay traveled to Syria where the Amalek or the Amalekites reside. Okay, Amalekites are a tribe of a very tall people, very dynamic, very handsome, very creative, very intelligent. So they are a very powerful tribe. And he found, Amr ibn Luhay found them to be a powerful civilization who worship idols. And he asked them, uh, wh what are the idols you worship? Now, Amr ibn Luhay, you know, he didn't see idols in Makkah, around the Kaaba. The first time he's seeing idols and asking the Amalekites, these people in Syria, he's asking them, what are these idols you worship? And the people tell him, these are our sources of power. These are our gods. When we are in drought, when we have no water, no rain, when we are in hunger, when enemy attacks, we pray to these idols and miracles happen. Now Amr is impressed and he says, can you gift me one of these, one of these idols? And the Amalekites gave him an idol by the name of Hubal. Now Hubal is the first idol of the Arabian Peninsula. And it became the main idol of the Quraysh. If you know, you and you will get to know, inshallah, in the you know, uh, in the future, in the further, uh, in the future classes we have. During the Battle of Uhud, when Abu Sufyan, the leader of the Quraysh, okay, when he gained victory over, you no, know, for a part-time victory over the Muslims, and the Prophet and the Sahaba were hiding on, you know, uh, uh, Mount Uhud. Okay, they were hiding there. And Abu Sufyan comes here and he shouts. What does Abu Sufyan shout? Ulu Hubal. That is, Hubal has won. He mentions that Abu Sufyan is mentioning the same idol Amr first brought to Arabia. Okay, then you know the story the Prophet said to Umar radiallahu anhu, respond back to him. Respond to Abu Sufyan. He is telling Hubal has won. So Umar asked, how do I respond, O Prophet of Allah? The Prophet said, tell him, Allah is our protector and you have no protector. The point here is that Amr brought this idol, Hubal, back and put it in front of the Kaaba. And this was the first time paganism started. Shirk started. This is the story. Now it is said that Amr ibn Luhay also changed the talbiya for Hajj. The original talbiya is Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik, La Sharika, Laka Labbaik. You know, this, you, the same talbiya we recite during Hajj. The Prophet continued this talbiya, free of shirk. But now Amr ibn Luhay changed it to Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik la sharika laka, illa sharikan huwa lak tamlikuhu wa ma malak. Okay, uh, the translation is here I am, O oh Allah, here I am, here I am. You have no partner, O oh Allah, except for a partner who belongs to you and you control the partner and all that he controls. Which basically means, O oh Allah, you have partners, but you are the biggest God. There are different gods. There are partners with Allah, but Allah is the biggest. Just like ancient Greek okay, and so many ancient civilizations, they had a you know, main God, okay, and they had minor gods, okay, false gods. So Amr ibn Luhay invented this new Talbiya and a new paganistic religion in the name of Ibrahim a.s. Now you will get the details of this point in the notes, inshallah. Okay. Now we go to the next uh, slide. When did Amr ibn Luhay live? 
okay <laughs> there is no precise information uh, about when the arabs you know you know when amr ibn al-luhay lived in arabia because the arabs they didn't record the dates they didn't have a calendar rather they used to say you know a major occurrence in the year for example am al-fil the year of the elephant so they would say okay this happened two years before the year of the elephant or they would say this happened three years after the year of elephant so the calendar was not there until umar razi allahu anhu began the islamic calendar okay so big events in the year they used to just discuss and base uh, their information on the big events happened that year so amr ibn al-luhay al-huzay most probably lived uh, uh, around the same time as fahr the founder of the quraysh uh, we have read about fahr we have discussed fahr the ancestor of the prophet peace be upon him and even in the notes you will find information about fahr so roughly the first century of the christian era so 500 years before the coming of the prophet peace be upon him so amr ibn al luhay is and has introduced idol worship okay around 500 years before the prophet came and during this 500 years paganism spread like wild fire and it is observed and uh, i would like to hear your views you know in the question answer session how why are people why are human beings attracted to idol worship so much so many we see around us so many intelligent people doctors engineers and scientists professors what not but they worship idols who cannot speak who cannot see who cannot hear they have to be you know created they people make them people paint them you know people dress them up and they worship that so common and this has been since time immemorial in every age you find people attracted to idol worship so it is so dangerous auz billah auz billah min shaitan rajim may allah protect us may allah protect our children from idol worship now we come to the next question how can one man that is uh, uh, amr ibn al luhay change the religion of ibrahim alaihi salam and ismail alaihi salam okay you might think right you know the religion of ibrahim alaihi salam and ismail alaihi salam they you know started islam in makka and wow, how come one man coming after so many years of after ismail alis uh, ibrahim alis salam he comes and changes the religion of you know this this great religion of islam how can this happen now there are three factors first is inferiority complex <coughs> so amr had inferiority complex towards the advanced amalekites these people were a powerful civilization who had history writing architecture large buildings they were undefeated in wars so amr ibn al luhay is so much impressed by these people he felt the complex and assumed that the amalekites must be correct in everything now this is a very very important point and we can discuss this point for hours together wallahi wallahi this point inferiority complex we can discuss it for hours together it is so dangerous our children you know are suffering from the same inferiority complex when they go out in the big you know big bad world they see so many people so many different cultures they are impressed you no know? now these people and these cultures and these religious practices are not connected with islam at all but still our children our youth they are impressed they are impressed by the sports stars they are impressed by the film stars they are impressed by the world around them and they are 
even impressed by the religious practices of these people. So it is so important to remove this <clears throat> inferiority complex from our children by, you know, you know, telling them by introducing them the Quran, the translation of the Quran, making them understand the Quran, explaining them Tawheed. Okay, so many things are there. And that requires a different lecture. So Amr ibn al also committed the same mistake. He thinks that these powerful people are so intelligent and so creative, so talented. How can they be wrong in spiritual matters? So Amr ibn al accepted their spiritual practice and their idol worship. <clears throat> Second point is Amr ibn al was a very influential person among his people. He was the chief of the Khuza tribe. Okay, He was one of the most respected in Mecca, had a lot of power, was a generous man. Okay, He won lots of different battles, so people followed him. He is prestigious. He has high credentials. The Khuza, the tribe of Amr ibn Nuhay, was in charge of Mecca for a certain period of time. So that is when idolatry spread in Mecca. Another lesson we can draw here is, you know, uh, people follow the influential person. People follow the Makkan, you know, the 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 modern uh, success, so-called successful people. For example, I would, I, would, uh, I'd, I would not like to name, take names, but certain film stars, even Muslim film stars, you know, into brag, you know, into inverted commas, Muslim film stars. They are so successful. The whole world is crazy about them. Okay, now what they are doing is against the Quran. But people, our youth is are getting impressed by them. Okay. So again, this is a very you know important lesson we can draw from this point. Point number three: there was at least two thousand years between Amr ibn al and Ibrahim alayhi salam. So there was a long time when there was no guidance. <laughs> Ignorance prevailed. Okay, 2000 years passed, people forgot the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. People forgot the practices of you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, etc. Then there is a, another uh, 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 narration that Amr ibn al was inspired by the shaitan. Okay? Through dreams. Okay? The names of the idols of Nu alayhi salam, as mentioned in the Quran, Wad, Suwa, Yahus, Yauq, Nasr. Okay? Now, these, you know, it is another narration. Shaitan inspired Amr ibn al and this you would get in the notes, inshallah. Okay? You will read this in the notes. Now, we go to the next slide, and, uh, okay, pre Islamic. Arabia, various paganistic practices. The first, uh, now these are really, you know, if you Google search, these are the idols of, if I'm not wrong, Hubal. The central idol is of Hubal and different idols around Makkah. Hmm? So you can see okay, how, you know, amazing it is to, for an, you know, intellectual being, like a human being, okay, to leave the worship of Allah and follow this falsehood. Now, the first paganistic practice in pre-Islamic Arabia was whenever the Arabs, okay, went out, okay, for trading, they would chip away a rock from the Kaaba, okay, and they would take it as an idol. Okay, and worship it. So it is absolutely wrong. Kaaba is not a god. The bricks of the Kaaba or the stones of the Kaaba are not god. Okay, we, it is so so clear. But these people used to, whenever they used to go on a journey, they would take a rock from the Kaaba and they would worship it as an idol. Point number two, worshipping rocks and stones. A Sahabi said, okay, before Islam came, the Arabs, 
the makkans worshiped rocks and stones and if we found a rock that looked more beautiful than the one we were worshiping we would throw the old one away and put the new one in its place <laughs> okay and if we were traveling in a desert and we couldn't find a rock we would gather sand put into a pile bring a goat squeeze some milk out of it to make the sand firm and then do tawaf around that stand uh, around that sand statue so the arabs were so so steep you know so much involved in idol worship that when they used to travel and when they didn't find a rock to worship they would take sand make it into a pile into an idol bring a goat take the milk of the goat and put it in the sand make the sand firm and then do tawaf around that sand statue sadly even to this day in some muslim countries we see people bowing down to grave to tawaf around it okay some people do the same with the saints and the mausoleums okay so many people so many falsehood still remain okay whenever we go away from the quran whenever we go away from understanding the quran from go away from islam then these things are bound to happen okay then the third paganistic practices before islam was naila and asaf okay now these uh, the details would be you know okay shared with you in the notes in short if i say in a nutshell there were two idols naila was put on safa and asaf was put on marwa before islam the quraish would touch naila and asaf when they went back and forth doing sai okay the the quraish used to do sai before the prophet came but they used to touch the statues of naila and asaf put on safa and marwa when islam came the muslims felt hesitant and they said you know the new muslim how can we do sai when it is meant to commemorate naila and asaf you know, the muslims thought you know, these safa and marwa are about naila and asaf the idols how can we do sai so allah tells in the quran the safa and marwa are the signs of allah even before naila and asaf ever came okay it was signs of allah ibrahim alaihi salam did introduce naila and asaf he used to do sai between safa and marwa hmm? now aisha radhiyallahu an anha says that since we were children we were hearing the story of naila and asaf the books of history say they were two lovers okay man and woman they were lovers and they could not find a place to be intimate except the interior of the kaaba so they consummated their romance inside the kaaba okay they what they did bad things inside the kaaba as a punishment allah made them stones right then and there allah punished them by making them you know by turning their bodies into stone so when the quraish found them these stones they took them as a miracle okay they didn't get the true lesson from this punishment of allah they thought oh these people have turned into stones this is a miracle and they put them on safa and marwa so this is the story of naila and asaf okay now fourth at uh, paganistic practices 360 idols around the kaaba so when the prophet conquered makka we you know we know that there were 360 idols around the kaaba of various shapes and sizes some in the shape of full humans some in the shape of animals but most idols were in the shape of half human and half animal okay just like in the children's fairy tales okay humanoids then the fifth paganistic practice was uh, the theology of the quraish that they believe that allah has daughters who were the angels you know the quraish believe that angels were the daughters of allah nauz billah astaghfirullah hmm? they worship the angels thinking they are the daughters of allah 
So this was the paganistic practice of the Quraysh before Islam. Another paganistic practice is the Arabs didn't have a creed, a specific, you know, uh, principle of religion. And most paganistic societies, they don't have creeds. Okay. For example, the Hindus of India, okay, they have it is the most clear example of the idolatrous religion. They don't have a unified creed. They have, don't have any aqeedah. One Hindu can worship one god and another worship another god. And you can have millions of Hindus worshipping millions of different gods. And each one has a different perception of 